brings more certainty, which yeah, is exactly. preferable. And yeah, exactly. Then so, I also wondered um, if there might be someone, like perhaps the um, the official from the Department of Justice, if um, that person might be able to provide us from a legal basis um, whether this particular wording that we're discussing right now would be um, acceptable legalistic wording on it. If we could perhaps have that official return to the table and answer Madam that. Madam Gay, if could you come person. back at the table, please? If you are in a position to answer the question from Senator Batters. Yes, Madam Sarah Gay, who is Director and General Counsel of the Department of Justice. Yes, Madam Gay. Do you have heard the question from Senator Batters? No, I'm sorry. Could you ask it again? Um, yes. Uh, the discussion that we were having about this particular amendment, 12.1, uh, as modified by Senator Pratt's sub-amendment, which would uh, add in, what was it again, um, is final subject to um, the rules the standing orders of the House of Commons and the rules of the Senate or something like that um, for the purposes of this part, whether that particular wording at what we're adding in about the subject to the rules of the Senate and the standing orders of the House of Commons, whether adding that in would be appropriate and proper from a legal perspective. I'm sorry, I don't think I could uh, answer that just because this is not... Uh our area of the bill. PCO has been the policy lead on this, and I'm not Is familiar with the Is anybody here in this large sea of officials that can answer these types of questions? And the not, Mrs. Why not? Mary Rassi, Democratic Institution from the Privy Council Office. Madam Rassi, you heard the question? Yes. Um, I'm not a lawyer. From a legal perspective, I couldn't comment on that aspect of it. Um, but I just ask why at a clause by clause we don't have somebody here that can answer these kinds of questions for us. Don't we normally have officials that can answer these types of I mean, in my five years or six years on this committee, we normally have people that can answer these kinds of questions for us. So you're not in position. Would there be somebody with well, you? Well, I, I was going to add something else. Yes, okay. then go on. <laughs> um, we were just... Uh, trying to provide the best advice possible um, and there's actually um, there was an additional amendment proposed for section 71.14 from Senator McCoy that has very similar language so we were hoping that maybe Senator Ringette if that's appropriate could read it or or I could read it as well it, it's exactly what's being discussed at the table the table so I don't know if it's so I'm, I'm yeah. So, Senator McCoy, could you could you uh, mention your uh, your amendment? The um, it's uh, I think it's uh, E M R four E M four. Well, it, it, you know I haven't I haven't put this forward. It's a, it was an option that um, I didn't think needed to be raised. But if you really want the full range of options. Before you, before you have a vote, uh, you can add another clause for say and say for greater certainty. But I, I I'm happy, I'm happy to go with um, uh, Senator Pratt's amendment, and and again rely on the chair to make sure that the uh, the le legislative drafting is 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 given a gold ribbon by the law clerk. Yeah, uh, for this, for the uh, oh, information ribbon. of all the senators. It's a gold star and a blue ribbon. I'm sorry, I'm mixing up things. The amendment of Senator McCaws referred to by the witnesses, uh, for greater certainty, Section 71.14 does not preclude any member of the Senate from raising a question of privilege in the Senate, comma, in accordance with its rules and orders. That was the, the wording of Senator. Yeah, McCoy. and that's why. Yeah, you do. You do want its orders in there. Yeah. The rules and orders. Yeah, the rules it? and orders. Yeah, that's yeah. that's what. Which as I say, that's what we have included in the amendment of Senator Pratt. Yeah. And we will, as I say, check if the word "standing" needs to be uh, added or not, depending, of course, of 
the uh, way that uh, it's normal could be normally referred. But I retain your suggestion that you would allow the the chair, with the concurrence of the steering, you know, to look into the final wording to be sure that it reflects what the honorable senators around the table have been proposing as preoccupation. Yes, Senator Batters. Yeah, and, and I'm, I'm quite happy if we can come to a solution with that. That would be great. I just, my question remains, though, why doesn't the Government of Canada, for this large of an act, have people here that can answer these kinds of questions for us on such a major act, where, frankly, the government is bringing so many of its own amendments at this very final stage of Senate committee, which is, you know, this act has been um, in front of the House of Commons for a long, long time, then it has been in front of the Senate for a lengthy period of time as well, and uh, and now they're bringing amendments at the very final stages. Um, so why don't they have people here that can answer our questions? Uh, maybe uh, I see Madame Naylor coming at the table. Um, Madam Naylor from, from, of course, the Treasury Board. And, uh, Thank go. you, and, and I understand the question it, it, and that the Senate Senators today wish to finalize the bill. Um, the challenge for us is that we bring various expertise to the table. Not everyone, of course, can answer each specific question in some cases. So in this case, I think the specific question was, can we, can we assert at this moment for you, or provide comfort for you, that, this, that a certain wording that's being drafted as we speak is, um, is legally correct. And that, for that to happen, we actually rely on expertise of legislative drafters and so on. So that kind of consultation can't, in fact, be done on the spot. So we appreciate the intention that the senators are bringing forward today. Uh, and we would have to go back and, and work with those who worked. There was a very large team of people working on this bill, but the legislative drafters work it, d do not appear at committee and do not attend committee in order to support the committee's procedures. Instead, what, what we, uh, we arrived before the committee with our policy expertise and experience, in my case, in, in administration of the Act, but we aren't necessarily able to provide legal advice to the committee today. I'm just telling you that for at this particular committee, my experience has been over the last several years that uh, we don't typically receive those kinds of answers. Um, we normally have Department of Justice officials who are able to come to the table and then answer these questions for us so that we can know if amendments, which are largely what the Government of Canada has drafted, but have a bit of a tweak here and there, um, if that's going to meet legal principles. As, as are applicable, so it's um, it's unfortunate and it uh, puts our our work in a delayed state. Thanks. Well, I I don't want senators. I may risk a comment. I, I I don't want to appear to defend, of course, the representative of the various departments, but I uh, I would just want to point out that uh, you will understand this bill is so complex uh, that it would need a, an army of legal advisor from each department. Because it touches within each, uh, you know, level of administration, a lot of elements. But uh, I, I receive your point. Uh, we should have from the Privy Council somebody who, of course, who has uh, the legal capacity to answer a question that has legal implications. But we will provide. Uh, I'll make sure that at the next meeting, uh, we will invite the representative with that capacity to come at the table. Thank you.